The planet has shifted. It has become principally urban. The biosphere is becoming a vast network of megacities on the edge of crisis. The urban population of the planet is increasing at the rate of over one million people a week. Symbol of unlimited growth, of rampant consumerism, New York is overheating. The city must change its model. Imagine a new horizon. The metamorphosis has already begun. It's a green revolution. All of society, the man in the street, the politician, the architect, is now embracing nature, its values, its concepts, its design. And it's becoming the catalyst for the city of tomorrow. By reconnecting with the living world, men are reinventing their city. Will New York change successfully? It has no choice. built on the waterfront. It became an archipelago with five boroughs, five peninsulas linked by bridges over the Hudson, the East River, the ocean, the largest coastline of any metropolis. To fuel its growth, it has destroyed vast forests and contributed generously to global warming. New York has made too many mistakes against nature. Now, it is being punished for its excesses. The master of the world has its feet in the water, and the anger of the elements has just begun. Every year for five years now has seen wilder weather in the New York skies. Tornadoes, floods, rising sea level from climate change. Manhattan, New York City's flagship, is taking in water on every side. If the city is here because it's on the ocean, and then the ocean rises, then you see the city, the very thing that made the city could destroy the city. Breaking news. This storm is a rare and extreme event, a Category 1 hurricane merging with an Arctic front. Irene, 2011. Sandy, 2012. The hurricanes hit more violently every time. You need to evacuate. Do not delay. Uh, this is a serious storm, and it potentially have fatal consequences if people have an act. 80 dead in 2012. The subway submerged, electricity cut off. $50 billion of damage and mud clear up to the windows of Wall Street. And in the storm, New York paddles around in a panic. Lower Manhattan on a Monday night. The road next to me has been turned into a river. Wall Street is down there. Everything around me is plunged into darkness. This is not what you expect from the world's richest and supposedly most sophisticated city, such as the power of Mother Nature. For the second time in its history, the megalopolis awakens with a weird sensation. Since September 11th, it knew it was vulnerable to men. Now, faced with the elements, it feels fragile. New York's Parks Commissioner reckons this is just the start. We are in grave danger from rising sea level. As storms increase in intensity, as we get hurricanes, we have had hurricanes and tornadoes in New York, over the last few years that we haven't seen before. If the sea level rises another foot in the next 100 years, that will all be underwater. To Hollywood, it was just another disaster movie scenario. To New Yorkers, even smarter, it was reality. New York City could be swept away at any moment by the very thing that created it, water. Now, 
now, New York City has no choice. It's either rethink or drown. But how? The finest architects brought together by MoMA in the Rising Currents Group are seeking a lifesaver. They all agree on one point. To survive, New York must make its peace with nature and make a new alliance with water. In his agency in Tribeca, Adam Yurinsky is at the forefront of this thinking. It was a wake-up call for the city. In New York City, the storm surge would enter the harbor through the Verrazano Narrows, and anything in the path of that would be subject to the lateral force of a storm surge of a wave, basically, a large wave. So the islands that we created create a buffer zone which can help dampen the force of a wave. Nature is a source of inspiration to us in terms of resilience. Making reefs to slow down waves, opening urban estuaries which let water into selected spots in Manhattan. Architects dream of recreating a natural ecosystem to stop the floods. Within the city, Yurinsky dreams up mechanisms and materials which absorb a maximum amount of water, storing it like a sponge in water parks and discharging it as late as possible as the soil would do naturally. New York City really doesn't have a choice. Something will have to be done. So the choice is really what to do. And um, the benefits, we think, of this strategy of a kind of ecological infrastructure to us uh, are so much greater than simply building a wall to keep the water out. Since New Orleans, town planners have seen that levees, however high they are, always give way. There is a before and after Katrina in how we approach cities. New York must work in harmony with water. Together, they must form a single organism. That's Yurinsky's message. Other visionaries go even further in coming to the city's help. Landscaper Kate Orff wants to use the most humble of animals. Can the oyster save New York? Our goal is really to kind of harness the biological processes and the biological power of the oyster itself to create not only new sort of physical urban fabrics, but also to um, uh, reconnect New Yorkers with their harbor. The oyster is this amazing animal that essentially can help us address uh, water quality through its biofiltration processes. Um, it can address storm surge through agglomerating into reef structures and attenuating waves. Um, and it also can address sea level rise in that um, it, it, cleaner water and, uh, and slower water mean that you can essentially reset your relationship with that water. Gathered in giant nets, oysters generate an amphibious urban landscape, a kind of postmodern Venice. And so we've designed essentially a kind of armature or an oyster texture <laughs> which consists of a series of marine piles, uh, which is connected by a, a sort of a woven mesh of fuzzy rope. This is sort of enchanting story, but it's actually also incredibly concrete and real. New York is feverishly seeking solutions by reconnecting with nature. Today, anything is on the agenda. If a shellfish can spell salvation, then it's up for consideration. In the 19th century, more than a half a million acres of oyster reefs would protect and feed the city, then nicknamed Oyster City. But who remembers that? 